Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. You are my breath, you are my peace, you are, uh, uh, your words flow through me. I mean, just what a beautiful prayer that just is embodied in, in this beautiful way. And it's perfect for the spiritual practice that we're going to be talking about this evening. Um, spiritual practices incorporate conscious use of breath in one way or another. All practices no matter what they are, whether it's, whether it's prayer, we use breath to speak or to breathe prayer and, and to sing prayer, to chant prayer, to open ourselves to, uh, to, to the breath. We use our breath in meditative practice just as we did while we did a walking meditation this evening. Still, we use the breath to orient ourselves, to, to unite ourselves, to, to connect us. Our breath is actually what brings us into alignment. Because breath is spirit. It is um, in, inspiration, respiration. Um, it is um, respirar. It is actually coming from this idea of the root word of spirit, of, of the invisible. But it's not just invisibility. It is presence. It is energy. It is prana. It is life force. It is intelligent. It is uh, bringing every blessing, harmony, and strength, and power, and, and um, uh, the, the balance and harmony into our bodies, and bringing everything that we need, sustenance, naturally. We know we can't survive without breath. And so that breath is what feeds us, but, but to use it as a tool, to use it consciously, is a practice that we can develop and use as part of our spiritual growth because it brings us into alignment. In yoga practice, um, <clears throat> breath is used as a voluntary practice for harnessing the prana, the life force, um, the, the word for uh, that life force that moves throughout the body, linking up body systems, emotions, uh, consciousness all together into one flow, into alignment. We, we too often split our brains up even. You know, we're so busy. Uh, why, the practice that we just went through in the walking meditation to label the thought process that takes me into planning or thinking or, you know, paying attention to my ears and that, that we, 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 we cut parts of us off. We do left brain thinking and planning. We do right brain dreaming and, and, um, uh, and connecting. That's generally the space that puts us out there, but it might, it, if we stay too long in the right brain, we can trip over our feet if we're trying to walk somewhere. We, it, it's, but, but prana, but life force, but presence, but being alert and aware. Like in the walking meditation, your whole body was aware. Your eyes were open. You weren't daydreaming per se. Even if you let your mind wander, you brought it back. You were present in the moment. You were fully charged. You see? This is our natural state, believe it or not. This isn't a rarefied state. This is how we function. This is how we're supposed to always function. It's how the animals function. It's how life flows through us. Alert, aware, conscious, in every direction. We have the capacity to do 360, to, to, to be able to feel out from behind you. I'm gonna invite you just to take a deep breath in. 
And without turning around, breathe out through your back. Breathe out through your back. And allow yourself to feel and sense the space behind you. Whether you know in your imagination what's behind there or not, try to feel, just feel the space where there's blocks, where there's, where there's uh, what, e even um, an interruption in the flow around you. How far back is the wall, objects behind you? Can you feel them? With your eyes closed, can you even feel the light, perhaps? Opening your eyes back again into this room, you know you have the capacity, we all do, to feel and to take in so much more information than we can see or hear or touch. Um, all of the information that is coming at us comes from all sorts of different awarenesses that we possess. But we've narrowed them down. And in fact, taken our brain and cut it into pieces and said, left brain, right brain. Whereas whole mind, heart, soul, body, aligned with this present moment, this is what life is. This is the practice to stay here, present now. There's an energetic connection that comes through aligning with our breath, mind, body, spirit into one flow. Because our breath is our life. We know we, we can't survive without it. Now we know why. Because life is flowing through us with that force. Joanna Macy says, the life pouring through us, pumping our heart and breathing through our lungs did not begin at our birth or conception. Like every particle in every atom and molecule of our bodies, it goes back through time to the very first splitting and spinning of the stars. Yes. David laughed, but he knows that's true. <laughs> Use of the breath is a spiritual practice. It is part voluntary and part involuntary. How so? Well, you know, if you stop breathing, if you hold your breath voluntarily, there comes a moment when you might succeed in passing out, and if you do, that's when the involuntary takes over and saves your life. You see? So you, you will, your body is always seeking that connection to realign, to thrive, to, to bring life force and power into expression. So using our spiritual uh, practice of our noticing our breath, of using breath, is a tool that you have ever ready, always available to you. And it will calm you, and it will bring more ideas into your head. When you breathe, when you realize that you've not been breathing, that you've been allowing stress and anxiety and tension to hold you small and keep your lungs from expanding to full capacity, to let that oxygen flow into your brain where suddenly all the wires are lit up and everything is in color and technicolor and ah, I think I have the answer. I think I see now what the problem is, right? That's how we, that's how we problem solve, that's how we imagine, that's how we create, that's how we connect. Our breath is the tool, it's the key, it's the connector. Betty Hillison says, sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two 
deep breaths or the turning inwards in prayer for five short minutes, bringing our focus inward, breathing, connecting. We have it ever ready, just like that. When we remember, when we pay attention, when we see that we are not breathing, when we see that we are stressed, that we, where our minds are, when we start practicing awareness and mindfulness, we begin to notice how very often we aren't even in our bodies. We aren't even in our surroundings. We're not even in the room that our physical bodies are in. We're somewhere else. Yes, I am all the time. I feel like I'm always somewhere else. And I come floating back in and, and um, it, you know, it's a, it's a hard drop in sometimes. You know, it's like trying to remember, oh yeah, that's right. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was here. This practice of, of staying connected this is a spiritual practice, breathing. So when we need to shift the energy, we take a breath. I wanted to call that title tonight, taking a breath, so that you will use that. If you just take those three words and tape them someplace, put, put them someplace where you'll see them, where they'll come up, take a breath. And then do it. Remind yourself to take a breath and do it. You'll notice how often you were not breathing deeply. And suddenly you're connected, you're present, you drop back into this place. That is a spiritual practice. That is an alignment. And that becomes a habit. Healing with deep connected breathing is called holotropic breathing. It is a very specific type of deep connected breathing where you just breathe in and out and continuously without pause. You can get a little lightheaded. You need to be laying down when that happens. But, but what can happen is that you clear, you clear, you clear, and you change the energy. You change the, the chemicals in your body, in your brain, in your, in your whole system recharges. And the healing happens where, where um, stored memories and stored emotions and, and belief systems begin to come to the surface and allow you to dispel them, to, to examine them, to renegotiate some of your belief systems and to be able to, to move through some of the harboring, some of the stored um, shock and pain that um, was not able to be experienced or dealt with at the time of the event or when things happened. And you can release those and heal and become freer and lighter and become more available and more compassionate, more powerful, more loving. That too is spiritual practice and it's the power of breath. Take a breath. Take a breath. Take a breath before you say something you don't mean. Take a breath before you say something you mean that's mean. <laughs> Take a breath to pause and reconsider. Take a breath while you consider what the answer might be. Take a breath and lift up and expand out and remember that your connection is eternal and ever with you. You are not alone. And in this moment, take a breath and fill up with gratitude that you can. Thich Nhat Hanh says, breath is the bridge which connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. Wherever your mind becomes scattered, use your breath as the means to take hold of your mind again. Take a breath. Ah, now I remember.
remember. Now, what I, now I know why I came in this room. Now I know what I was coming after. Now I remember what I was doing. Now I remember what I planned to do, what I said I would do. Now I remember who I really am. Now I remember I am not alone. Take a breath. Spiritual practice involves sitting, noticing, letting go of judgment and resistance, opening to whatever is, receiving guidance, insight, healing, renewal. That's why we sit. That's why we meditate. That's why you go outside even and just sit on a park bench, uh, on a stone bench, uh, go for a walk and pay attention, just like you did in this meditation, with your eyes open, and notice, see things as they are. Our world is full of great beauty, especially this time of year. Yes, after the winter storm has <laughs> passed us, we move back out and things are starting to open up again, and they will, and they will heal. St. Francis de Sales says, what we need in our practice is a cup of understanding, a barrel of love, and an ocean of patience. Because the mindfulness that's required to sit in practice, either open-eyed awareness, if that's your choice, or close-eyed sitting and moving inward and noticing, dropping down into the breath and noticing breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out, noticing and staying present until you notice you're not and notice where you went. Oh, planning back to the breath in, and out, in, and out, and noticing when you're not noticing, and when you do, where have you been? Oh yeah, remembering, judging, forgetting, come back. The spiritual practice requires a thousand times you might wander off, a thousand and one times you come back. Relax, breathe, notice your breath, focus on a sacred word, visualization, prayer, whatever it is that you do. And when you notice you've started thinking, as St. Francis de Sales says, bring yourself back to the focus quite gently. And even if you do nothing during the whole of your hour or your set-aside time frame, whatever that is, if you do nothing but bring your heart back a thousand times, though it went away every time you, you thought, your hour would be very well employed. A thousand times, though? Really? What if I thought... I sit down in the morning or I sit down for my practice and I think it's going to be a thousand times again today, I kind of get, you know what, I'm kind of like an overachiever, you know. I don't like to fail a thousand times every time, every day. How much failure can you tolerate, actually? But here's the deal. You know what Thomas Edison said when he was designing the light bulb? I know you've heard this. He says, I have not failed. I have found 10,000 ways that won't work. Do you hear somebody who is on it? 10,000. 10,000 ways that won't work is information that led him down the narrow, rarefied path to what does. Because he knew he was on a journey. He knew he was in a process of discovery. What if you knew that about your life? That this spiritual practice is not a goal-oriented thing. It's not to move it from a thousand times to only 900 times. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah, 900, or, or 500 times, or 200 times. You're not in a race, and you're not going to get better at it necessarily. It is the practice. It is the process. That is in itself the thing. He knew he was on a journey, Thomas Edison, a process of discovery. So I invite you to think of your practice this way. Let's pretend that you have a very hard stone, a stone with very hard surface, and you set it down on a tabletop, and you have a, a nail and a small hammer, and your idea is to tap that nail across the surface of the stone, and every time it slips off, you put it back into the place where you were last, and you tap, and you tap, and you tap, to slide it gently across the surface, so it makes one long scratch today, barely perceptible. Tomorrow, you pick it up and you start it and you tap it on the hard surface and it slides off and you find it again and you, you tap it all the way across. Right into the scratch or as close to the scratch as you can get and you make a second scratch and tomorrow again and again, and again, and again, and again, and you scratch the surface, literally, until you have created a small little groove, ragged, rough, not perfect, yours, and you keep going, and you keep going, and you keep going, and you develop a groove. That's what happens in you when you do this. Not, without a, not with a rock, but in your practice. You create a groove in yourself. You, give, you, give a, 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 you, you set up an alert, an, a, an alarm system in your neurons and in your, your psyche that says, I'm preparing myself to receive. I am breathing now, and I'm falling into the place I left yesterday morning at the same time. And I'm entering that space again. And it becomes easier and easier and easier. And soon you will find yourself there more and more. And throughout the day, you'll drop in and visit. And you'll take a breath. And it will remind you and take you to the groove, which is your spiritual practice. And there you will find that you have a touchstone in your heart. You are your own touchstone, for you carry the tool, your breath, that is carving a space that keeps you connected, aligned, and receiving what is next for you. The groove isn't the purpose, though. It's the way. In Mark chapter 4, my very favorite, one of my very favorite parables of Jesus, he said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how it does. All by itself the soil produces Grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because harvest has come. This is your practice. The kingdom of heaven is alive in you. It is a seed that is being grown through you. You are that rich soil. You are the breath of life. You are a child of the universe. Everything waits, holds its breath as you breathe yours. Namaste. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. 
If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.